You like crypto? You like gaming? Well, in this video, I'm going to be finding out about a new game which has this play to own option. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Got crypto? Got a hardware wallet to keep your crypto safe? Then you have to have one of these to keep your seed phrase safe. The Keystone tablet is fireproof, waterproof. I invested £25,000. Today, that investment is worth £5 million. Say hello to our hero, the Hydrogen Energy Release Optimizer. Limitless power, zero emissions. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. And you may have noticed that I've added another link, bit.ly slash Crypto Rich 3 Speak. If you're watching this on Odyssey or on Rumble or on either of my YouTube channels, come over to bit.ly Crypto Rich, bit.ly slash Crypto Rich 3 Speak because you can earn crypto there. It's fully, fully decentralized, fully censorship resistant and no chance of any sort of shadow ban like there is on YouTube. And we'll also come to Twitter. But anyway, follow me on Twitter. In the meantime, Crypto Rich YT, join my official Telegram announcements channel, and we shall get going. Hey, Luke, thank you so much for making yourself available. Hey, thanks for having us. Uh, always a pleasure uh, showing off our game. Uh, looking forward to what you think of the game today. Yes, yeah, well, hopeless asking me about the game because I was invited by Carl from Carl the Moon. He's connected to this project, said, you know, do you want to play this game? No, I don't want to play this game. Look at the color of my hair. Right. I was awful at Pac-Man and Space Invaders. And you want me to play these fantasy games? No way, no way, no way. Yeah, it's also way too addicting. Like uh, uh, you can spend hours, but you don't need to spend hours. You can also just play a little bit. So maybe you should check it out and see if it's addicting or not. Okay, well, you're going to show us some of the game, right? Now, what's you, who are you in the team? And, and then we can talk about the game. Uh, yeah, I, I'm Luke. Uh, I'm the marketing manager for Medieval Empires. Uh, not only marketing, I also do business development. Uh, I do the videos. Uh, if you see the the nice armor uh, in my background, uh, yep. we have a couple of videos on our YouTube as well where I run around with this and uh, do some fancy things. Uh, you should check that definitely out. And uh, yeah, I, basically I do everything uh, and uh, try to um, have, uh, have the socials ready and everything and uh, go on YouTube videos uh, with Crypto Rich uh, to show how the gameplay looks like. Okay, and, and then what is this game, Medieval Empires? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a mid-core strategy game uh, where uh, it's built around, uh, I don't know if you watched the season Ertugul uh, and no Enginald and Dusertan, he's basically... I waste, I waste enough of my time <laughs> on Twitter and Odyssey and other screens to go into TV channels and stuff. So no, I'm, I'm afraid I haven't, but there are people here who will, right? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, the season is uh, in the Guinness World Record book uh, for most uh, airing time. It's actually bigger than Game of Thrones. People don't know that. Uh, wow. And Engin Altan is uh, the Jon Snow of Game of Thrones, uh, but in the series, and he's the face of the game. Uh, at the moment, later, we will add a Crusader face, uh, which could be a Draco Malfoy or some other uh, uh, English uh, maybe, maybe you, you are from, from the UK. Maybe you could be the, the face of the Crusaders. Uh, oh uh, and, uh, yeah, in the game, you, um, build your town, you, um, um, build your army, and then you go, uh, on the province map and fight off invaders. Uh, we will have boss fights and everything. Um, later when I show you, I think, uh, you will totally get it. Um, and it's, uh, playing around mid-century or, uh, the, the medieval times, uh, so we can also expand it to different factions. Right now we have the, the Kahi tribe, which is uh, based around the, the Ertugul uh, figure. Then we have the Crusaders. Uh, Byzantine Empire will be added most likely later. Holy Roman Empire. You name it. All those medieval mighty armies. And then you can fight on, on your land. Oh, my God. So, so, so a player could actually become like the chief of a particular village or, or tribe or a king of a small kingdom and stuff and then start rampaging and pillaging and colonizing or resisting rampages and pillages and colonizing. Yeah, basically what every every one of us has dreamed already, being back in medieval times in your armor and raiding uh, some villages and everything. Like Karl, for example, he's a uh, he's a clan lord. Uh, he has multiple lands. So on those lands, his, uh, his uh, friends play at the moment. So uh, either you're a clan lord or you're just a landlord. Like I, I have one piece of land, so I'm a landlord. Or you just play the game and are in such a such a group of uh, awesome people playing the game, yeah. Right. So I could go on and then I could go and raid your land, 
for Carl's land go to war or form alliances or resist Carl invading my territory? So, uh, so, y yes and no. So uh, okay. it start in the beginning. It's just a uh, uh, PVE. So you are there and fighting off NPCs, those invaders. Uh, and uh, soon we will add uh, PVP so you can play against your friends on your land. And then later we will have clan versus clan, land versus land. Then we have historical battles uh, where basically all the people on the on, on, on the whole map will fight against each other, have historical battles. Uh, also, when we implement new factions, there will always be a fight for the new faction. Uh, and the winner basically decides which faction we will implement in the game. Could be... The, the Swedish or uh, someone else. Uh, like we want the community to totally decide in which direction the game is going because we're a web free game. So the community is basically the ones driving the the gameplay. Wow. Okay, that's amazing. So that that sort of aspect of human history and human behavior, where they go around colonizing and raping and pillaging, we get to play in the digital. Well, no, not everything. You won't. Find, not everything. Uh, okay, but the pillaging the and the colonizing. That, that part will be in there, uh, and we try to keep it as historically accurate as possible, but since it's a community-driven uh, event, uh, it could be that it's a little bit different. Like, maybe the Crusaders will have a land that they didn't have during the, the real time, right. um, but, uh, yeah, you never know how, how it will pan out. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Now, these sorts of games are addictive. I know because I know that people play these obsessively. It requires mm. a level of thinking and strategy. You know, I, I've played chess and chess mm. is, does have that addictive quality because it's so provocative. And I'm getting the same sense of this game as well because mm. you've got to strategize. And it's almost, it's, it's the real world mapped in a digital arena. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, so basically you uh, have different options. So either you can just stay in your town, build your army, fight off invaders, but you can also fight together with the people on your land. And that requires like tactics. Uh, who, who are you going to send? Do you send the cavalry first? Uh, do you send the archers? So that will, the, the gameplay will enhance over time. Currently, we're still in the alpha uh, version of the game, which means we have the ba basic features. We test the economy. We balance everything out that the archers are not destroying the, the guys in the heavy armor too easily and stuff like this. So it's still still in the making. Um, but together with the community, we figure out uh, which works the best, um, what mechanisms uh, will work, and then we will see uh, what the community will do. Maybe whole archer armies will rampage through the whole land, or it's just the the, the guys on the cavalry. Uh, we will see how this one pans out in the future. Okay. okay, now this is, what you're talking about here is just a regular computer game. So what's it got to do with crypto? <laughs> is the crypto... Uh, yeah, several of things. So um, we thought that having ownership of the assets that you own in the or that you earn in the game or get in the game uh, is a feature that is uh, widely undervalued. So, for example, you played uh, World of Warcraft for years and you have this amazing character with all the gear, the weapons and everything, and then you stop playing, but you don't own anything of the assets. You don't have a resale value, so you just put in money, but you don't get anything in return. Mm -hmm. In Medieval Empires, you uh, will own the heroes that you generate. If the heroes die, basically, or the durability is used up, you get a legacy NFT, which you can trade on the marketplace. We have land, and on that land, you have contracts uh, with the tenants, basically, of your land um, based on a smart contract, and then you can rent it out to other people. So you own the land as an NFT, and then you have people playing on your land, and they pay you in either resources, in silver token, which is the in-game currency, or in me token, uh, which is our native token. And um, then we have a couple of other features like buildings, decorations. They can all be NFTs. And if you decide at a certain point you don't want to play anymore, which will never happen, uh, <laughs> then you could uh, resell it. Or you say, well, I want to have this uh, hero instead of the one that I got. And then you put the one that you have on the marketplace and buy another one or you trade. Like we want to also enhance trading between the players or uh, supporting each other on the land. For example, if Carl needs a hero, then I can send him a hero or he sends me stuff. I prefer it that way so that he sends me all his stuff that he earned. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will see how this one pans out. And that way we have a game which adds value not only to us, but also to the user because he owns the assets. Uh, they can sell it. They can do whatever they want with it. And that's true ownership. And that's why we decided to go for that direction of a game. But we still want to have all the old gamers, like the Web2 gamers in our game, because that will drive millions of players. 
Mm. In Web3, so far, you have maybe 5 million wallets or something like this. With 5 million wallets, you cannot scale that much. But if you attract the Web2 gamers, which is not that easy because that's why we don't market ourselves as an NFT game or something like this, because gamers don't like the word NFT. Um, so we have a custodial wallet, a passport wallet, basically. So the gamer can get a wallet from us without knowing that they do crypto. And then at a certain point, they realize, oh, I own lots of stuff. Maybe I sell it. And then we try to convert them to crypto users, basically. Right. Okay. All right. And I know the gaming industry is massive. Like it's yeah. worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars all in Korea, China, the United States, India, in, all over the world. Right. So the potential is huge. Is the game actually played on the blockchain or is it regular? I don't know, legacy code so, stuff. Yeah, it, it runs on Unity, uh, basically, and parts of it are on the blockchain. For example, if you uh, have your hero, um, then uh, you want to make an NFT out of it, then it's subscribed basically to the blockchain or uh, the smart contracts for the land, they're on the blockchain. But the rest of the game is a launcher that you download and then you run it as normal on your PC. Right, okay. Now, the blockchain, is a, uh, don't. it's not Ethereum, right? Don't it, it couldn't be a theory. That'd be too expensive. <laughs> so, so what <laughs> blockchain is it on? Uh, currently, we're on Polygon. We're okay. also partnered with uh, Immutable uh, as one of 12 projects uh, in their new ZK EVM uh, integration. We're actually the first one. Uh, they chose us because we have the, um, or we want to expand to the MENA region because we have the actor and uh, the tie-ins of uh, Engin Altan Düzertan, who's really famous in the whole MENA region, like uh, Turkey, Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, and everywhere. And they want to expand there, so that's why we uh, build, for example, the Passport Wallet, or the uh, the Marketplace will be uh, provided by ImmutableX. Right, okay. All right, so it's EVM compatible, and Polygon is very fast and very cheap. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right. And the Silver token, the in-game token, and me are interchangeable? within the uh, application no so we the in-game currency is silver uh and then we have the the me token where you um have later the utility for example for stake and play uh, vip access so we wanted to have an in-game currency which is not like deflationary for example so uh, where you can say it will always similar to a stable uh, coin most likely where you say that's always a certain um, a certain value for the coin that we have. So that's the in-game currency. And then we have the me token, which is uh, tradable on Bybit, MEXC, QuickSwap, uh, you name it. Okay. And but are, can they be exchanged? Like can, can somebody by earn, playing and earning lots of silver tokens, exchange them for me and then go and exchange them for Bitcoin or something on an exchange? Uh, so uh, it will most likely be similar in the future. So there will be a liquidity pool where you can provide your liquidity to it, or you can go on the marketplace and sell the silver that you have and then acquire me tokens. That is possible, but not a direct swap, for example, for silver to me, at least not now. Uh, but I would need to ask my tech guys uh, okay. what's the plan in the future. Yeah. Okay. So what's the advantage of the me token? Why should anybody hold a me token? Because they can just start, start by playing and earn silver the in-game currency and keep playing that way, why have the me token? Uh, so there are several factors for the me token. The the first one will be uh, premium access uh, or let's call it VIP access. So you will get, uh, for example, in the game, you can uh, upgrade your buildings. If you hold a certain amount of me tokens, then you can upgrade two buildings or you can put them in a queue. Um, then we have uh, the me token will be, for example, for the renting feature of the land. So you can charge me tokens for people that play on your land, um, then we have stake to play. For example, you want to play on a tier five land, uh, then you can stake a certain amount of me tokens in order to play on a tier five land instead of a tier one land, for example. Uh, and there are a couple of other benefits. Uh, we have a, on our uh, tokenomics page and uh, our white paper, we have a whole list of uh, utilities we want to have for the me token also uh, uh, for the marketplace, the, the me token. Um, that you can use the me token uh, on the marketplace to purchase uh, items and uh, yeah staking for example uh, is also a feature for for the me token okay and then would i be able to rent out so you know i've got really good armor or weaponry or something i can rent it out to somebody and earn income off that is that is there going to be that option so you can rent out the parts of your land to another player uh right. 
and uh, the units, uh, which will be NFTs, you can trade them on the marketplace. So, so you get an NFT, hey, this is my hero, uh, you put them on the marketplace and then you can sell it. Yeah. Right, okay. All right, and then th th will there be leagues and leaderboards and all the other stuff? And, and also, for me, look, entry level. Like toddler level gameplay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should I maybe show you directly yeah, uh, how, it's, how it's looking? I think that's the that's the easiest way. Um, one second, I will share my screen over here. Okay, perfect. So uh, this is the game. Uh, you start on the world map, and the whole world map will be later on filled with uh, other land parts. For example, you will have the Crusaders. Uh, most likely down here, somewhere at the Gulf of Alexandretta, uh, because that's where historically they they were uh, were based. And uh, we started with North Ankara because I said we started with the with the Kahi tribe, and those are all connected to Open Sea. So you can choose a land which you want to have. You can also go directly to Open Sea and acquire that land. And this, for example, is my land over here. It's a Tier Four land. So I have a couple of benefits more in the game, like uh, a speed booster, more resources, and uh, if you join your land. Uh, that is the province map, for example. And you see, this this is me here, Luke. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I have other people already settled on my land. Currently, we're implementing the feature of the, the, the rent out. So currently, they pay for free on my land. Uh, but later on, I will charge them, for example, the silver token over here, the uh, wheat, wood, or ore, um, or the meat token. Then I can say, okay, uh, Ayan over here, you pay me, uh, I don't know, 50,000 silver a month for playing on my land. Uh, but most of the guys will play for free on my land because I like those guys and those are my <laughs> friends. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you start with building your town. So uh, let me start with this. This is my town. I'm already pretty advanced. I, uh, I'm kind of addicted to that game. And then you have here your, uh, your resources that you can uh, have. Uh, and you start with building each of the buildings. So uh, you see over here, I can build a farm, a lumber mill, a mine, and then I have my archery range and everything. And um, I already maxed out all my buildings from what I can build, but I could also, for example, rearrange my town so it looks more uh, how I want to have it, for example. Um, and then you start building. So uh, you build your heroes. Um, you can also speed up the process, for example. I can have this hero now instantly if you use the silver that's why you want to farm the silver basically mm -hmm. uh, and then you get a hero the hero will lead your army which i'm currently building over here as well for example i have the archery range where i built some archers let me speed that up as well uh, so i can show it to you so uh you get an archer uh you can level up your archer based on the requirements that you have you want to have a huge big army so i need also higher level archers so i can uh, upgrade them over here um, then I have a hospital after my, you see, I'm fighting a lot. So I have a lot of people in my hospital over here. Uh, and after they fought, they get injured and they need to go to the hospital. Then you have quests in the game, uh, over here where you can say, for example, increase the level of any hero. The more quests you complete, the more silver as a reward you get, which you can later again use for speed ups or for even acquiring, uh, new heroes. For example, if I want to get a new hero, I need to pay a thousand silver. Uh, I can also do it instantly, but that's a little bit more expensive. Uh, or you can upgrade your heroes over here. For example, if I say, okay, I want uh, Dursun bin Hakan, uh, I want to level him up. I just go here and level him up. And that means giving more powers. Yeah, he's getting more speed, uh, uh, more attack power, because I need that when I go to the province map. I want to fight off those invaders over here. So if I want to fight, for example, uh, this guy over here, mm -hmm. I can go attack him, choose the army, which I want to attack him with, uh, maybe put in some uh, horsemen over here as well. Um, let me put this one here. Uh, and then I go and attack the crusaders on my land. I can also attack multiple based on the, the level that I have. Uh, I'm level 12 at the moment, so I can go and attack those guys. I can even attack together with the people on my land. Uh, so if, uh, for example, uh, Fajad over here wants to join me in the fight, he can also send his uh, army to, to support me in the battle. And uh, also the other guys around here. Later on, we will also have big bo boss fights. Then you have a big boss over here or a castle that you have to storm. Um, and then you all fight together. And when I killed the crusader over here, Right now I'm playing the Kahi tribe. Later you can also play the Crusaders and the other factions. Uh, then I get resources like wheat, wood, and ore, which I need to increase my army and fight off new invaders. 
Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm reminded of um, when I was in infant school, you know, playing Second World War or Cowboys and Indians or whatever it was, right? And and then boys will always be boys. And now here we are playing similar games. Yeah. Games, right? yeah. And the, I like the theme, the like medieval always was was part where I said, like, this is totally mine, uh, having uh, the Crusaders, warriors. Uh, I think every one of us played it as a, a as a child. And then you can also compete with your friends. So we have a leaderboard. You see, yeah. I'm currently ranked 17. I'm not ranked one, uh, unfortunately, because we have people that are way playing way more than I do. Uh, and then you have weekly leaderboards. Uh, you have... Um, can choose if you want to have progress, for example, in this week. And you see Da Vinci over here. I think you know him as well. Yes. Uh, he's grinding so hard. Uh, da Vinci and Carl and uh, some of the other guys are catching up on me. As you see, in the weekly board, I'm just uh, ranked 20 and I play a lot. Um, but yeah, um, so you have your leaderboard and we have uh, later uh, also weekly competitions, monthly competitions. Currently, we run a competition for the top 10 of the uh, second early access where we are at the moment uh, can win some prizes uh, like server token or me tokens. Uh, we haven't decided yet what we will give out, uh, but we know it's the first 10 that will uh, get a prize, for example. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you're in alpha stage, meaning you're still testing the game. If people want to get involved and start playing the game, can they? is there a test net they can play on? Hmm. So currently, uh, either you own a land uh, and uh, you can get the land. Uh, let me show that to you as well. Um, so you could get a land if you uh, go to our link tree uh, or to our website uh, and then go to OpenSea and then you can check all the collection that we have. Then you are uh, able to play or you go to our Discord. In our Discord, we have a recruitment channel where the landlords, so the guys that actually own the land at the moment, they can recruit players. So that's the second way. So either own the land, find a landlord in our Discord where you can play, or you take part in some of the competitions that we have on our Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, we do a couple of giveaways um, um, where you can enter a whitelist spot, for example, for the game. Um, and then we whitelist you for the game, and then you can play. Currently, we keep that limited because we don't want to have too many players because we're still testing. We test yeah. the game mechanics. We test uh, on... Uh, how the players react to certain features. And we have a limited set of features at the moment. And by the way, that's me in the in the armor over here that you see. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we still have limited capabilities on the features, but we are building in continuous build, which means sure. every week or every second week, we ship new features. Uh, we will have updates because we want to build with the community. So whenever we have something new, we show it to the community, get their feedback, uh, implement the feedback and uh, build the game together with them instead of having like half a year where we don't do anything, build in secret, come out and say like, look what we build. And then actually the community says, yeah, but we don't like it. Right. Uh, so we said, okay, every two weeks, we ship one feature, ask for feedback. We get a lot of feedback from our landlords, uh, which are amazing people. They they write me those kind of messages. They're like, how about this? How about this? I can't even cope with all of the stuff that they would like to have in the game. I, I'm passionate about it as well, but then uh, they are way more passionate. And you see, um, like all the the cool features that we're going to implement, like uh, big armies fighting together, uh, and yeah, so the game will grow and grow over time. Um, and yeah, we also show like the the art updates uh, on our YouTube channel if you want to check them out. Um, and here's, for example, one of the giveaways that I mentioned where you can uh, win whitelist spots for our game. Um, and we try to partner with lots of other games or bigger entities in the in the space so we can support each other in growing. Uh, and yeah. Wow. Also, okay. And when, when are you going to be launching the game for real, do you reckon? Mm -hmm. So uh, we will launch in October. We have a, a, we call it crypto access, basically, where you can stake to play. Uh, and uh, increase the number of people. But the, the public version, so the public beta version, will be in January, uh, where everyone that wants to play can just go there, click the Play Now button over here, uh, sign up with your email, and then directly start playing after you've downloaded the game. Uh, and that's when we go really big in numbers. At least that's the, the plan. That, that's the plan. Okay. And if people want to get involved, I'll have all the links in the description below. Is there anything else you want to let us know or show us that we haven't covered? 
Uh, no, uh, thanks. I just wanted to say thanks uh, for asking those questions and thanks to the community for watching. I uh, really appreciate uh, every single one. If you want to uh, join us, go to our Discord, Twitter, uh, or write to me directly, ask Rich uh, and harass him that he's also playing the game. Uh, uh, so I have someone that I can fight off later. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Luke, thank you so much and feel free to come back on and uh, let us know about the progress of this. Anybody who's watching, if you have any, this is the sort of game, if you're a gamer, right, what do you think? Is this something you'd like to play? And uh, give us the comments below. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with Gaming Profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Luke signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.